program that educates and enlightens you about everything you need to know about your health. Today we are at the Adama State Contributory Health Management Agency and we will be talking about everything that we need to know about the scheme. We have the Executive Secretary in the person of Dr. Amos Kuchu who will educate us and tell us everything we need to know about the program. So you're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, to start this program, we want to know why did the government establish this scheme? Okay, so thank you very much for that important uh, question. Uh, of course, like you mentioned, uh, the name of the agency is uh, Adama State Contributory Health Management Agency. Uh, formerly, it used to be called Health Insurance Agency. Uh, so, but it's just a change in nomenclature. The mandate of the agency still remains the same. And to answer your question specifically, the mandate of this agency is to enable all residents of Adama State to be able to ad, uh, access qualitative healthcare services at an affordable rate. And this is in tandem with the global agenda that is popularly called the Sustainable Development Goal, uh, which seeks to provide opportunity for everybody, irrespective of age, irrespective of social economic status, irrespective of geographical location, to be able to access the needed healthcare services that they need. And this healthcare services is a spectrum. It ranges from what we call preventive care. Preventive care has to do with like giving immunization to protect children against illnesses. Then we have promotive care, where we educate people to do exercise in order to be able to maintain a healthy uh, uh, status. Curate uh, primary care, that is happening at the primary healthcare level and it ranges from a lot of things, you know, testing and screening for hypertension and diabetes is an example of primary service, as well as secondary service. Secondary service has to do with a care at a higher level that involves surgery, for example. Uh, a majority of the surgical procedures are considered secondary care. And then there is what we call a highly specialized care, tertiary care. This has to do with even services that can only be obtained at Federal Medical Center, uh, Specialist Hospital, for example, or Modibo Adama uh, University, right? Teaching Hospital. So, in a nutshell, every resident of Adama, whether he lives in the village or he lives in the rural, I mean, in a rural area or urban area, whether he's in active civil service or he's retired whether he is a disadvantage, you know, having physical disability, you know, can still be able to access all these services, you know, without actually uh, suffering from what we call financial hardship. In other words, lack of money should not prevent people from going to hospital if they need to, right? And then going to hospital should not impoverish people. Because there are situations where somebody goes to hospital and is expected to undergo a surgical procedure that is in hundreds of thousands, he has to go back and sell his land, landed property, or sell some of his assets. And that has been termed as a derogatory uh, way of accessing care because he is accessing care but he's losing his means of livelihood. So essentially, health insurance provides that enabling environment for people to be able to access care. And this is also in line or aligns with the uh, constitutional provision of the right to health. One of the fundamental rights of human being is access to care, health care, access to education, access to water, right? So it's actually something that is at the center of developmental agenda of government at the global level at the national level as well as at the state level. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. So now, now how far has the program gone in the state? Yes, uh, so far so good. Uh, in the last two, three years that we've been operating, uh, we've been able to leave our footprints uh, in terms of some modest achievements that we have recorded. Uh, proud to our coming to office in 2000, 
uh, there wasn't a single enrollee. In other words, there isn't a single Adamawa State resident that is registered under any form of health insurance scheme. But I, as I speak with you, we have over 27,000 civil servants that have been registered. And then when you add their family members to this number, it gives you over 100,000 people, right, that can access care, either as a civil servant or their families. And then we have a special category of people that are termed the vulnerable group. Uh, this includes under five children, pregnant women, elderly people living with disability, as well as people that have been verified to be indigent. In other words, they are disadvantaged and vulnerable. We have over 41,000 of such category of people that have been paid for by the government of His Excellency Right Honorable Amadou Mouamadou Fintri and already they are able to access care irrespective of the fact that they were not able to pay for themselves. Uh, in addition to these numbers, we have been able to get support from the federal government also to enroll additional people to access care under what we call the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund. Uh, it's a support that comes from the government at the national level, but the government of Adamawa State paid a counterpart for to be able to attract that support from the national, right? We have accredited, in other words, registered a good number of uh, healthcare facilities, whether primary or secondary or tertiary, and even private hospitals that are already participating in this process. We have deployed a robust ICT platform because our operations are e, is digitized from enrollment to payment to uh, accreditation. We've digitized it, you know, in line with the global uh, best practices. Uh, in addition to that, also, we visit facilities on quarterly assurance system. In other words, we visit this facility, identify where challenges are, and provide solutions. So we do quarterly supportive. Uh, supervision to those facilities. We organize trainings from our healthcare workers from time to time. As I speak with you, there is a proposed training for all our DEX officers in the 21 local government. This is all aimed at enhancing their capacity to be able to operationalize this scheme effectively and efficiently. Right? We've been generating data which we share with the National Health Insurance Authority. This data is available on our website as well. Uh, already we have attracted support from two uh, notable uh, uh, non-governmental, international governmental organizations like the USAID. USAID is United States Aid for Development. Uh, already discussion has reached advanced stage to get additional funding from them to scale up registration for internally displaced persons that are living in Adama, whether they are in the camp or in their host communities, they will be registered and be granted access to healthcare services as the need arises, right? We've participated in several review meetings at the national level, as well as at the, at the international level. Uh, we have a dashboard that is available. We have a governing board that meets quarterly. In fact, the next meeting likely is going to happen next week where we give update to the governing board on the activities that we are doing as an agency. Uh, we have very strong collaboration with even NGOs and civil society organizations within the state. Uh, a very uh, notable, or a very, uh, I'll give you an example, is uh, 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 Women uh, Emancipation, uh, for, uh, an organization actually that deals with women and youths uh, who we are collaborating with in order to be able to sensitize people in the state about the benefits of this scheme and how it can help people to be able to uh, you know, exercise their rights you know, to access healthcare services when they need to. So we've done a host of uh, other activities like sensitization meetings, uh, including appearing on a platform like this. We visited first class areas in the state. We had engagements with uh, district heads. We've met with uh, Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria Leadership. We paid advocacy to the leadership of Muslim Council uh, in Adamawa State. Uh, so we do review meetings from time to time. So these are things that we have been able to achieve in the last two, three years, like I've mentioned, uh, which hitherto were not even existent completely in the state. Okay. Um, now, do you have records or testimonies of where these health facilities 
And secondly, in the Enrique Handbook, there is a place within waiting periods dated for 60 days, and now we are approaching six months. Why is it so? Yeah, uh, when we started this scheme, uh, the initial proposal was to use a waiting period of 60 days, but along the line, we discovered to be able to align with best practices all over the world. Uh, the national is using 90 days. Uh, states in the federation, including neighboring states like Gombe, Borno, Taraba, use 90 days. And we realistically reviewed the process, right? So that we can also adapt the same thing. So we reviewed our operational guideline. It is the old document that reflected 60, but the new document we have now is also 90 days, in tandem with what other states and even the national is doing. The essence of that waiting period is to be able to uh, carry out administrative processes. This includes registration of the people, printing their ID cards, payment to facilities, training for the healthcare workers, giving them time to procure the things they need in preparation for the visit of the people that are enrolled. And as I speak with you, we've already gone past that waiting period. People have been assessing care. I have documents or data that I can present to you for people that assess care as far back as January, February, March, and even the April that we are in. Uh, a very good example is a lady who resides in Yola Town, Shajari Phase 2, whose husband is working in the Ministry of uh, uh, Livestock. Right? The lady had an accident some time ago. She was operated on, an implant was inserted in the leg because the leg, the bone could not be set back to its former, its original position. Right? But the operation was not successful. So she, she, the husband came and we, uh, the woman was taken to Fortland. Right? Uh, based on the choice of the husband, that's the facility he selected. The doctor reviewed her and he uh, recommended that the old implant in her leg should be removed and then a new one should be inserted, right? The whole procedure was going to cost between 300 to 400,000 and we were able to facilitate it. Already as I speak with you, this woman is discharged, she is in her house. As a matter of fact, just yesterday the head of marketing visited her in her house and did a short video, about two, three minutes. Maybe you can even use that and insert it in this uh, presentation. We can make that available to you as a live evidence and testimony of somebody that has already benefited. Um, doctor, emergency could arise. Yeah. And say, for instance, I registered my health where I can access my facilities at Nabu Potasi. And I traveled to Jomolo and emergency. Uh, I felt sick. So, do, can I access the facility yeah. there yeah. with my card? Yeah. Being that I didn't register. As long as there is a primary healthcare facility that has been accredited, or a private facility, or a secondary facility, you can access care. Right? I told you, like I said in the various uh, presentations, in each political unit, or what rather, each political ward, and we have two to six wards in Adama, there is a functional primary healthcare facility in each of those wards, right? So if Jopolio is within a political ward, definitely there is a facility there that you can access, right? And because Jopolio is in a local government, there is also a functional higher level facility. For example, uh, if it's Jopolio that you mentioned, Cottage Hospital Fufuri is within close proximity. So any services that cannot be rendered at that level will be referred to Cottage Hospital Fufuri. And they will attend to the person, right? But if paraventure, it requires even coming to Jimeta, for example, to specialist hospital, the person can still be taken to specialist hospital. So there is actually leverage to be able to access over 95% of health needs of an individual under this scheme. What are you want to know is that how do I connect from the hospital where I register to the room for them to be able to um, uh, mark it that I am also uh, registered um, with this person? 
facility. Yeah. So what is going to what what will happen is we issue ID cards to every ROD, and on the back of the ID card, there is boldly written two phone lines. They are toll free lines. They are our lines that somebody can call two four seven, and there will always be someone that will answer it. And interestingly, it's even a toll free line. You are not charged for making that call. So provided you present that ID card to that facility, they will just call us directly, right? Informing us is that somebody from somewhere found herself in Jobolio or in that locality and needs to access healthcare, right? We'll give them the right, the authorization to attend to you and whatever bill that will accrue, right? The bill will be sent to us and we defray the bill. Okay. Yes. So they don't even have to communicate with the hospital that you selected earlier because it's an emergency, right? And one other good thing you need to know and people need to be aware about is with the establishment of the National Health Act 2014, in the past, when emergencies happen, for example, road traffic accidents and you go to hospital, the hospital insists that you must bring a, medic, a police report. This has been taken care of with the new National Health Act. Emergency should be attended to irrespective of the cause. However, if there is a reason to suspect some criminal element or association, the facility, while attending to that individual to revive the person and save life, should communicate the security agencies immediately to ensure that the case is reported. Okay. Emergency should be attended to. You are the two from the program Health Talk, and our guest is Dr. Amos Uchili, the Executive Secretary of Adama State Contributing Health Management Agency. We'll be back after the break. Please stay tuned. services that are not covered under the scheme. So even if you are a registered beneficiary of the scheme, if you happen to have those excluded services, you may need to uh, cater for it. Uh, however, there is also what we call partial exclusion. Partial exclusion are services that we share the responsibility. The agency takes part of it, 15%, while the individual also takes part of it. I'll give you an example. If you require a highly specialized investigation like a CT scan or MRI. MRI is magnetic resonance imaging. CT scan is a computerized tomography scan. It's highly specialized, right? We take 50% and the individual pays 50%. Uh, then there are services that are completely excluded Right? And those services have to do with highly specialized and expensive procedures. Example, if a lady decides she wants to go for plastic surgery to enhance certain parts of her body, those are purely luxury. They are not covered. So we consider that exclusive services. Uh, if an accident happens as a result of natural disasters like war, for example, industrial accidents, those also are those things are also not covered under the scheme. It's considered an exclusive service. There are things that happen occasionally. A child is given birth to with a defect in their heart, or what we call a hole in the heart of the child, and he needs to be operated on. And as I speak with you, very few facilities can even do that type of surgery. Most often you have to take them to India 
Uh, well, lately we have facilities in Abuja that can do it. Those services are also on the exclusive list because it's highly capital intensive and we don't even have facilities close by that can render those services. Those, so those are the exclusive. We have a, a few other services considered under the exclusive list like that. Um, if someone pays for three to four years and is almost retired and no child of their family is, what's his position? The civil servant is yes. about to retire and yes. doesn't have a child. Well, the, child, the children are already grown up mm -hmm. and the assumption, one of the assumptions in operationalizing this model is any child above 18 is likely to be in a tertiary institution of higher learning, right? And those students in tertiary institutions enjoy a special plan that is highly subsidized. As a matter of fact, it's just less than 4,000, all right? So they are registered under that plan, and they, they, they are covered under that plan. In fact, without even this, people, students still pay medical fee. So the medical fee they have been paying can actually cater for, for this. So, so they benefit of that, that. And for the, for the parent, we, we advise them to also do a medical checkup if they are not ill, mm -hmm. right? At that age, there, are, there is a high pro, 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 a propensity to have some hidden illnesses that if you don't go and check, you may not know about it. Mm -hmm. And it may be causing damage to the organs of the body. So they can take advantage to do their checkups. Okay. What can you say on the purpose of establishing this for skin? We can ask the objectives of His Excellency, the Governor of the State of Nama what are the objectives? Yeah, the objectives generally include uh, enabling people to access care, okay. right, yes, without necessarily paying out of pocket. Okay. Uh, it enables facilities to get income, okay. because this money that is being deducted, 80% of it goes to hospitals. Okay. I'm telling you, 80% of the deduction goes to hospitals. So automatically, hospitals are now getting extra income and it's a sustainable one. They use it to upgrade their facilities, to employ more hands, right? So it enhances the quality of care for the facility, right? Private facility also have the opportunity to participate in the process. So it's one of the objective as well. Quality of care goes up, right? Disease in the local in that locality also tends to go down. People enjoy more quality of life. As a matter of fact, it has been documented that people will have more a longer life expectancy when they are covered under health insurance. So generally those are the objectives. Now aligning that or juxtaposing that with the eleven point agenda of his excellency, I remember when he made a categorical statement on the day he was sworn in that the level of infant mortality and maternal mortality and then poverty in the state speaks to an unfolding disaster. But beyond just a political rhetoric, he made a policy declaration that his government will revive primary health care, which he did, empower women to access health care services, which he did, and improve the livelihood of the people. Generally, the projection is to enhance development in the health sector and a healthy state it's a productive state. Now, Doctor, we can go and have one very determined against us. I want you to tell us the challenges. Yeah. So, in any program like this, usually there can be one or two teaching challenges, right? Uh, what we have observed generally is people's awareness about health insurance is still very limited. Yes. So, that's why we use platforms like this to educate people and give people the opportunity. Another challenge is people have registered and they don't even go to access the care. We encourage people to access care, you know, to check, to do even checkups if they are, if they are ill, right? Uh, other challenges we have encountered are uh, things like uh, the distance from where they live to the hospital that they have chosen. That can also be taken care of because you can always choose facility, right? Uh, you can change facility when you wish to. Uh, we have had few instances where the quality of care rendered to the elderly was less than what they expected and they complained to us. And we put systems in place to ensure that 
that issue is addressed. If it's not addressed, we give people the opportunity to change their facility, you know, so that they can be able to optimize the benefit of the contributions they have been making uh, to the system. So it is something that is very, you know, beneficial for the state. Uh, it's an unprecedented uh, achievement, uh, especially under uh, His Excellency. And people should take maximum advantage of this to be able to live a healthier life. Uh, a very good, a uh, very solid benefit of this program is more medical tourism will be minimized to the barest minimum. Uh, in the past, people go to Abuja to take care of certain things. Now, these things are available uh, in the States, so people should be able to uh, take advantage of it. Thank you, Doctor. So, what's the final thing? Yeah, it will still boil down to the fact that people should be aware that this is an unprecedented development brought about by the government of His Excellency Right Honorable Amadou Monifuntri because he has committed resources, he has engaged the right personnel, he has provided all that is required to operationalize this scheme. So they should reciprocate that gesture by taking advantage and getting enrolled, and not just getting enrolled, going when they need to access health care services and also cascading the information to people that are not aware so that every citizen of Adama will have the benefit of accessing quality health care services that they need. And that way we can live a healthier life and we can be more productive in our various endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. for opening up those doors. I hope that when we come back again, you still like it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. We will let have been the program health topic of Dr. Amos Ujigin. We hope that you've been educated and you know everything about that has to do with the agency. We'll be back again some other time. For me, for me it's bye and stay blessed.